mental cell lymphoma is a very distinct subtype of non-Hodgkin's uh, B-cell lymphoma. It affects 5 to 8 percent uh, of all non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So to put that into context, about 4,000 patients each year um, were diagnosed with uh, mental cell lymphoma. So it's quite unique. Most patients with this particular uh, disease um, uh, tend to be elderly, so the median age at time of diagnosis is over 65. And it also affects men uh, more so than um, women uh, in the ratio of three to one. Clinical presentation of mental cell lymphoma can be variable, okay? And I would say uh, most patients would have some symptoms. You know, they would notice a lymph node swellings and other manifestations which brought uh, their care to um, physicians and uh, had a, a biopsy performed. They are the classic form of mental cell lymphoma which manifest by lymphadenopathy. And there's also a smaller subset of patients, maybe about 30%, could essentially have very few or no symptoms. Their only manifestation could be increased white cells in the blood or a very mild uh, enlargement of spleen. For the more common form of mental cell lymphoma, which is a classic nodal form, a uh, patient um, could be observed, but generally they are symptomatic and would require treatment uh, fairly soon after uh, diagnosis. For the other form, which is a non-nodal form, they tend to be more indolent, where a patient can be observed uh, carefully and uh, without uh, disease uh, progression for a very long period of time, even without treatment. So we do have to be careful and uh, characterize you know, each individual patient's disease characteristics and disease course in order to determine uh, who would require treatment, when and what type of treatment to provide. For some patient who may have somewhat indolent presentation, uh, we generally do more conservative watch and wait. And we see them maybe three months, uh, six months, or a year, sometimes longer, just to monitor you know, if they have developed symptoms that require treatment. For most mental cell lymphoma patients, they can be observed for a period of time. However, they would be requiring treatment. The, um, treatment for mental cell lymphoma, uh, currently, you know, there's no one single standard upfront therapy. However, most commonly, we provide combination of chemo immunotherapy, which is uh, monoclonal antibody rituximab plus uh, combination chemotherapy. And we generally looking at patient and stratify them based on their age, their physical status, if they're young and fit, um, we generally recommend combination uh, chemo immunotherapy and oftentimes uh, consider intensive regimen uh, which include this particular agent, cytarabine. That has shown very high effectiveness for patients with mental cell lymphoma. Following induction treatment, whether it's high intensity chemo uh, using the high dose cytarabine plus stem cell transplant consolidation or outpatient based chemoimmunotherapy regimen, we generally recommend rituximab maintenance for about two years, uh, which has shown um, improvement for uh, patient survival in both those scenarios. Within the past decade, 10 years, um, there are four FDA-approved novel agents. Those are not traditional chemotherapy agents. They really target specific pathways uh, within um, tumor cells uh, in order to disrupt uh, their metabolism and leading to um, you know, treatment effectiveness and hopefully controlling uh, mental cell lymphoma. They include uh, proteasome inhibitor bortezomab, um, and the second agent is lenalidomide, which is a immunomodulatory compound. Third and the fourth agents are both uh, Broton tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Uh, one is ibrutinib, and the second newer one is aclabrutinib. And uh, the last three are oral agents, which again, in formulation, it's revolutionary. 
uh, which means that we have those new agents which can be provided in clinic and sometimes taken at home by patients and it broadly uh, expand the reach of very effective agents for mental cell lymphoma. So it is making a very measurable and sweeping impact in terms of how we're managing uh, patients with mental cell lymphoma, both in the initial treatment phase as well as in the relapse um, uh, refractory uh, conditions. I would say it really is patient and treatment dependent. You know, by then, uh, patients already have it been exposed to, you know, initial induction treatment, and we want to ask the question, do they respond to the initial therapy? What kind of initial therapy? Was it chemotherapy-based? How long of a response and duration they actually derived from the uh, first line, that carries a uh, significant weight in terms of deciding what's the best second option. If they were chemotherapy resistant somewhat, I think one want to consider biological agents, novel therapy, clinical trials exploring bio biological agents or even CAR T cells earlier, knowing that you know more chemotherapy would not be the answer. And um, for other patients, if you know, they had a very, very good remission for very long, lasting more than five years with fairly mild uh, recurrence. And in those case scenario, one could continue to consider some form of chemotherapy if that's working better. Clinical trials are extremely important and I would say it's paramount to a, a disease, a condition uh, such as mental cell lymphoma, which is kind of rare. We talked about only 4,000 cases per year. It's somewhat heterogeneous because not every um, uh, mental cell lymphoma patients present exactly the same way. There are a lot of great agents and combination in order to know which one works better and for what particular individual patients. I think a collective efforts, you know, in a very prospectively planned, uh, objectively assessed clinical trial setting would make a lasting and tremendous impact. It's a very uh, life-changing, overwhelming experience for anyone who comes with a new diagnosis, especially new diagnosis of a, you know, a rare condition, a mental cell lymphoma. Many, uh, you know, ways to improve um, um, one's understanding and uh, um, feel like you're not alone and you're actually in a community where there's lots of help, including finding the right physicians or uh, academic community center sort of partnership to uh, get the best possible care that's out there. It's important to have a connection with a uh, academic center that was expertise, you know, in terms of knowledge, uh, research, uh, resource, and clinical trial options for mental cell lymphoma, just so that one could be well informed and uh, aware of what are the resources out there. Uh, it's important to try to ask all the questions there is about this conditions um, and, um, and I think have a uh, interaction with the uh, you know, providers with expertise uh, in this particular disease would be tremendously helpful to have most, if not all, the question answered and, and uh, constant uh, interactions. We also have, you know, research nurse, um, social workers, uh, nutritionists who are fairly well organized and well versed in terms of, you know, uh, providing a supportive care uh, in this particular uh, conditions. And then I, I think it's important that you know, we offer clinical trials, both in the frontline setting and relapse setting. And I want to stress that well-designed clinical trials usually comes with really state-of-the-art um, uh, treatment options, you know, for mental cell lymphoma. I would say uh, it would be available, you know, years perhaps before it become a common uh, options, you know, to people who's not on clinical trials. So, so that certainly comes with a benefit. Utilize a resource uh, 
s such as LRF and others, patient education, advocacy um, settings, you know, just to see what other resource there is for education, uh, patient networking and support. I think it's tremendously important. And uh, some patients may decide that they wanting to be treated, you know, close to their community. And there are many academic centers provide partnership such that you can, you know, maintain a longitudinal uh, interactions. And I think it's quite important, you know, not only for the initial therapy settings, but uh, in cases where some uh, retreatment should be considered, um, you know, they, they may be able to uh, find a better option than just what's available.